Well hello there and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be going through how to make and paint a very simple dice bag. It's coming up to my boyfriend's birthday and he's getting his first set of dice for Warhammer. But it's a lot cheaper to buy them separately than it is with the cube so I thought that it would be a nice little thing to have his own personal bag. So the original tutorial for this, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, it's from another channel and it's based on an adventure time bag but I just thought that since I'm going to be using fabric paints and changing that a bit it might be something that other people might be interested in. Okay, so here we go. So you're going to want to cut out two swaps of fabric this size, the measurements will be put in the description below, 11 inches by this one's by 13 but you can do it as big as 15 based on the template so yeah you're going to need two this size and you're also going to need two circles cut out of the same fabric so once you've done that what I'm going to start off with is the painting right so I'm going to put his initials on it so you may think oh, I'll put it halfway up to make it look certain way but obviously the top bit is going to have drawstring to it so there's going to be a bit of extra fabric so I'll put it down a couple of centimeters just so that it is actually at least kind of central again I'm going to half it in the middle, leaving side on each side for the seam. Need it. Now you only need to do this um, drawing on one of your two pieces of fabric. One of them's acting as a lining. So where where that cross meets, um, a small circle, because that's going to be where the dot goes between his two initials. And then obviously it's up to you what sort of font you want to put it in. Now initially I'm just putting a rough sort of size guide um, and I'm going to go back over it to sort out what sort of front I want. You could just do this bag because this is the sort of thing you're going to end up with. Like this is actually the lining that I did beforehand. Um, it's going to be this sort of size. So obviously you're putting on this one bit. I don't know if you want to do it. You could do it so it's repeating. So you've got one on both sides if you want it. So I'm going to go for a very basic design, I'm going to go for black and green um, because his dice that I've got him are black and green and marbled a bit, they're quite cool, I'll link them in the description. So I'm going to go sort of for like a black flame look down the bottom. Now when you're drawing flames, this is something that you can do quite erratically and actually it's something that you do really need to draw on beforehand so if you just go along and put some some small peaks on I don't know if you can see that and then add in like curvy bits you'll be able to see it once I'm doing it if you make the amount that you go down in between the flames vary it makes it look more realistic I'm also going to layer mine because I'm going to try and get some shading so they kind of lick around the initials. This is what I've drawn out so far. So you also need a little cup full of water and having a palette is advisable. Or you can do what I do and I just take random box lists because I can't be bothered with washing up palettes. Now I have black fabric colour if you just squeeze out a little bit um, just there. Now this works actually pretty much like normal for example watercolour so obviously the more water you add to it the less stable it's going to become as a colour tea break. Right. 
However, obviously the easier it will be to spread on the surface. So I'm just gonna add a bit of water on. And if you do this, it means that you get less patchy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the first underneath layer because I've layered it up in black. If you don't go straight up to the seams, because obviously you're going to be sewing them. Um, so this is the first layer of flames at the moment. I'm going to be using a finer brush to go over and refine some of the bits. Um, and I would say in between doing the layers you should let it dry because um, it will fade into the fabric more and you may need to do more than one coat. Um, that happens quite a lot. And you should iron it on uh, just in case you for some reason need to wash this or Okay, so now I've gone over the edges of this, um, so I'm going to leave it to dry. One of the things I would recommend doing is you have to be very careful when you are painting because it will come through the fabric. Um, obviously it doesn't matter because you're going to be lining this, but it's just if you're doing this on a specific surface, make sure that it is one that can be just wiped down easily. Obviously this is going to be the outside and that's the bottom of it with flames. I'm going to paint this, which is going to act as the bottom of the bag, in black. There we go, so now you just need to leave it to dry and I'll see you tomorrow. Hi there and welcome back. It's been a couple of days since I did the first bit. That's mainly because I haven't been able to get any time on my own to continue painting. Um, but as you can probably see, this is now dry for the first layer. I think it looks a bit like maleficent -y in colour. Um, but I'm now going to layer the second one. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use green fabric paint in amongst black flames. So like in the centre, where the flame is meant to be hottest, I'm going to add in some green bits. Um, and then kind of blend it into the black, just to see how that works. So I've got my fabric paints again, and of course I've got new cup of tea with the mug I painted myself. Tea is essential for crafting and daily functioning. So I just, I just, I feel like we need a tea update in every video. So I actually have um, two shades of green right here. Um, this looks kind of black, but it's actually just a very dark green. So we're going to start with the lighter green. I mean, don't worry if they're not exactly the same colours. I had no clue what colour green I had in here initially. And you're just going to put a bit on. And you can really tell as you add the water that that is actually a green and not just a dark black. And then all you're going to do is just kind of blend this in. It's up to you quite how far up on each of the flames you put each colour. I'm also not going to wash my brush quite as much in between because this helps give you a bit of a better layering effect, especially as it's going to be absorbed a bit into the fabric. And then you're just going to add the black. So I'm separating out the flames just because you don't really want the paint to dry in between each one. So what I recommend you do is you get some green on your brush and just kind of very gently add that in there. So then after I've done that, so I've done one bit, you can see the sort of effect that I'm getting there. So I'm going to carry on aiming to continue with that effect. Make sure that you wash off your brush in between each set 
segment of flame that you start or else you end up with darker middle bits each time Right, so you can probably see now this is what it looks like. I might, I'm gonna just go through and add a few extra wisps quickly. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to using the lighter green. Um, and I'm gonna use it to highlight the flames just so that certain bits stand out because obviously you've got the bits in the black um, where you can't see them as well. And it means it as an extra dimension. So for this you don't need that much paint on your brush. Um, you want a decent amount. And I'm just going to choose some edges so I don't know how well you can see it. The thing that you have to be careful of is if you put too much water on your brush as you paint then it will run. If that happens, it's like the proper, the non-watered down black, so like this bit. And I've just taken a little bit and I'm just going to go over these bits. This is the base for it. Um, because when you hold it up to the light, okay that's the wrong way around, but this is the way around it's meant to be. It's a bit messy, so I'm going to give it another coat of black since I have some black. So, thank you very much and I'll see you in a bit. Well, Bye. Hi and welcome back. Today I'm using an Oogie Boogie mop for my cup of tea. I hope you have yours ready. To be adding in the um, initials. So I found this font that I want to use. I'm just going to do mine in black fonts is up to you. You can actually trace it from the computer because obviously the lights, depending on what fabric you've got, but if you're painting it, you should be able to see through it. All I did to type find the font I wanted is I literally typed in fonts to Google and looked at the images. Um, it then also comes up with some suggestions in the top, so if you want a cursive font or so on and so forth, it's all very easy to do. I've already put a rough JW, so I'm just going to edit what I have on it to make it into the sort of pretty writing. Also, I'm, I'm sorry about this, it's plain food colouring earlier. To make it into the pretty writing and stuff that I want it to be. Now, I've only done this roughly because I'm lazy. I don't know if you're getting that vibe from this tutorial um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint it on in black um, again if you're not as confident obviously you can trace it and trace it out properly I have got a little bit of an error as you can probably see I'm going to do some highlighting but only a little bit and it means that with the lighter green you can use this to cover up any mistakes you made um, and that's it for the painting so you just have to wait for that to dry really they're just going to be like mega impressed with your amazing mad skills that T has helped you gain okay well, thank you very much again, and I'll be back once it's dry.